Hello students, how are you all? Hope you are fine. So today we are going to begin with the next topic, Unit 4, 4.2, The Storyteller. Now kindly remove your textbook, page number 85. Now students, the storyteller is an extract written by H. H. Munro. The pen name is Saki. The storyteller is one of the best known short stories written by Saki. The pen name of the author H. H. Munro. The story is about three children traveling with their aunt and their encounter with a stranger who tells them an unconventional story not been heard of. Now in this story, three young children are on a trip with their aunt by the train and they are joined in the train um, car by a man traveling alone. The aunt is not able to control the children though she tries to do so by telling a story that they find very boring and to keep the children quiet. The bachelor tells an interesting story even though the aunt find it's uh, that it was an inappropriate story for children, but then too, she quietly listened. Now, students, there are many kinds of stories. For example, you have fable, you have parable, you have myth, you have legends, you have fairy tale, you have tragic tale, you have fiction, you have farce, you have you you can have is satire now many kinds of stories which uh, in a nutshell gives us very pleasant experiences also you can call it because it drives us to the world of imagination so here let us see what kind of story this is? It was a hot afternoon and the railway carriage was correspondingly sultry and the next stop was at the temple combi near, uh, nearly an hour ahead. Now here if you see how the beginning is and the occupants of the carriage were a small girl that is your character and a smaller girl and a small boy their aunt occupied one corner seat and further corner seat on the opposite side was occupied by a bachelor who was stranger to the party but the small girls and the small boy empathetically occupied the compartment both the aunt and the children were conversational in a limited, persistent way, reminding one of the attention of the housefly that refuses to be discouraged. Most of the aunt's remarks seemed to begin with don't and nearly all of the children, uh, their remarks begin with why and the bachelor said nothing, nothing out loud. Now, if you see in this, in this extract what is the poet trying what is the author trying to tell what the author is trying to tell in this extract is that how the scenario was who was traveling in that compartment and how was the behavior of the aunt and the aunt usually used the word don't now see many a times what happens when we uh, when we say don't, in our mind, our mind never accepts the language of not. For example, if you tell a small child that do not open the fridge again and again or do not go near the fire, what happens? He will, will purposely, he will try to go there. Because our mind doesn't understand the language of don't. But if you say that, uh, you can do it but carefully. 
सो हियर वॉट हैपन्स ये द आंट यूज टू से नॉट नॉट द डोंट डोंट बट वॉट वॉज द रिएक्शन रिएक्शन वॉज कम्प्लीटली द डिफरेंट वे नॉ सल्ट्री मीनिंग इज हियर इज हॉट एंड हॉट इन ह्यूमन क्लाइमेट वॉज देयर एंड वेन यू कॉल इट एज एम्पथेटिकली दैट मीन्स इन अ नोटिसबल मैनर ही इट इज दैट द वंस कम्स टू अ नोटिस दैट वॉट वॉज हैपनिंग सो सो इन द कंपार्टमेंट दे हैड फाइव ऑक्यूपेंट्स राइट एंड डोंट साइरल डोंट एक्सक्लेम द आन एज द स्मॉल बॉय बिगेन स्मैकिंग द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द सीट एंड प्रोड्यूसिंग अ क्लाउड ऑफ डस्ट एट ईच ब्लो Now see, when you start beating at the cushions, some of the other of of, of the dust do do come out. So here the aunt was telling that don't do anything. Come and look out of the window. She added, the child moved reluctantly to the window. Why are those sheep being driven out of that field? He asks. Who is asking that? Why are the sheep being driven out? Now, see many a times what happens that um, whenever you want to engross somebody somewhere else, what you do, you try to divert their attention. So here, as a aunt, aunt was telling again and again she was using the word "don't." Even the the children sitting there also got bored, and they and they. started doing some irritating activities like uh, smacking the and uh, smacking the cushions of the seats and so the aunt was using again and again don't see many a time whenever we travel by train also we have lot of time and what we do many of you all enjoy the beautiful scenery also you all watch it and you all play games and cards many things can be done or you can play some indoor games but here the children were really bored of it the child moved okay i expect i expect they are being driven to another field where there is more grass said the aunt weakly so the aunt is answering that see might be these sheep are being driven to the another field because there might be more grass there but there is a lot of grass in that field protested the boy he because he did not agree here the meaning of the protested is he did not agree that to that there's nothing else but grass there and there's lot of grass in that field perhaps the grass in the another field is better suggested the aunt fatalistically fatalistically foolishly because she had no valid answer so she was again and again repeating that might be the grass in that field is much better why is it better came the swift inevitable question so here it was asking that uh how can you say that the grass is better there oh look at those cows exclaimed the aunt nearly every field along the line had contained cows or bullocks but she spoke as though she were drawing attention to a rarity so here in this extract you'll find that the aunt was trying to divert their attention here and there now first one was that uh, he didn't ask that why were been the ships driven out of the field so the answer of the aunt mabel was that might be in the another field the grass is better and now here again she was trying to divert the attention by saying that look at those cows how are they and then she was she was drawing she was trying to draw the attention to the rarity see everybody sees the cow and they were grazing in the fields but to keep the children engrossed in somewhere or something else she was trying to draw the attention there drag the attention of the children in that direction
Why is the grass in the another field better? Persisted Cyril. Persisted again and again. He is asking. Then why it is so? The frown on the bachelor face was deepening. Now see, um, how was the expression of that man? He was about to laugh, deepening to a scowl. He was a hard, unsympathetic man, and the aunt. Uh, so he aunt saw that he was also sitting there, and by his behavior, she thought that might be this man. How is this man? He is really unsympathetic. That means what? Without any sympathy. Now, this uh, here the word is given as scowl. Scowl means what? Scowl means whenever anybody gives a angry look. Okay, she uh, she was utterly. Unable to come to any satisfactory decision about the grass in the other field, again and again, persistently she was telling that might be in the other field the grass is much better, but she did not had any answer. Means what? Her answer was completely baseless. And the smaller girl created a diversion by beginning to recite, "On the road to Mandalay." She only knew the first line, but she put her limited knowledge to the fullest possible use, and she repeated the line over and over, again and again, in a dreamy but resolute and very audible voice. Resolute means what? Ah,、uh, whenever you are saying something, when you are in a firm situation. So she was very firm. She was trying to recollect that poem. Okay, but. But and、uh, here she could hardly recollect anything, and so she was thinking, and whatever she was、uh, saying again and again, whatever she was reciting, it was very very clear. But the solid and very audible voice, it seemed to the bachelor as though someone had had a bet with her. Bet means what? Now bet means. Whenever you on you are betting on somebody, that means see, ah,、uh, if this happen, things happen, I'll be the winner, or I'll be the loser, according to the condition of the bet. Now, ah,、uh, here it is. One had a bet. Um, bet with her. She could not repeat the line aloud. Two thousand times without stopping. Now here it is used two thousand times. Practically, it is not possible. But the intention behind this is that she was repeating the lines again and again. Whoever it was, whoever had made the wager, was likely to lose the bet. Wager means the bet only. Come over here and listen to a story," said the aunt when the bachelor had looked twice at her. So ultimately,、uh, the aunt said, "Come here, I will tell you a story." Now, in this extract, first of all, the aunt,、uh, she was unable to give a reasonable answer that why the grass in the other end was better. And then the smaller girl, smaller of the two girls, they started to begin with the reciting the poem on the road to Mandalay, and she only knew the first line, but she, but she was trying and she was repeating again and again the same lines. So all these actions started to irritate the aunt. So ultimately. She thought that why not to tell them a story so that at least they will be quiet for some time. And the children move. Now here, what was the reaction of the children? The children moved listlessly towards the end,、uh, end of the carriage. Evidently, her reputation as a storyteller did not rank high 
in their estimation now in their estimation now this line is now, now see what happens everybody has got one or the other talent now the aunt was intending that if i tell them a story they will be quiet but she did not have had any story plot which would what do which would drive the attention of the of the small children in a low confident voice uninterrupted at the frequent intervals by loud petulant questionings from her listeners now petulant means unreasonable okay unreasonable questions from her listeners she began an unenterprising and deplorably uninteresting story now uh, though she tried her best to give a story in an interesting manner but the plot was also not good and even her delivering of the story was also uh, not in a proper manner it was indeed in a very bad way an interesting story about a little girl who was good and made friends with everyone on account of her goodness and was finally saved from a mad bull by a number of rescuers who admired her moral character now see it was a simple story that what always the good wins over the evil but the way of the delivery but the plot it was really not very interesting now wouldn't they have saved her if she didn't had been good demanded the bigger of the small girls it was exactly the question that the bachelor had wanted to ask so here the girl wanted to ask that if the girl was not good might be uh, no, here that uh, she would have said or not so the same question came in the mind of the bachelor also now see by this incident what we come to know that the story was really uninteresting and unenterprising and the children did not like the and even um, how what was the reaction also and the children did not like the good little girl in the story and she appeared to be too good and besides the aunt could not uh, could not even satisfy the question that they asked obviously that the aunt was not only a very bad storyteller but the story too was very very boring well yes admitted the aunt lamely now see lamely means she had no other option because she did not had any answer so she had to accept it okay lamely but i don't think that they would have a quiet run so fast to help her if they had not lied her so much it's the stupidest story how was the story it was the stupidest story i have ever heard said the bigger of the small girls with the immense conviction now conviction means what now see whenever you have certain uh, beliefs in your mind okay and whatever you listen against your belief how your reaction would be so uh, according to her it was really the uh, the nonsense story or it was the stupidest story i didn't tell i didn't listen after the first bit means after the first part bit means here it was the first part it was so stupid said sarah so here sarah also agreed that it was really very very bad story and it was uninteresting and and uh, even it was unenterprising the smaller girl made no actual comment on the story but she had a long ago recommended a murmured repetition of her favorite line now the reaction of the small girl was that she did not said anything but she was repeating her favorite lines which were the lines the li- yes the lines of the poem 
that is on the road to manly you don't seem to be a success as a storyteller said the bachelor suddenly from his corner so here the bachelor said to the aunt that i don't think that you are a successful uh, storyteller the aunt now see if anybody all of a sudden comes in comments on us how your reaction will be first of all we will get feel irritated so the aunt bristled in a instant defense at this unexpected attack it's a very difficult thing to tell stories that the children can both understand and appreciate she said stiffly she was very firm in her statement that it is very difficult to tell the children a story which is on a which can be understood and even can be appreciated by them i don't agree with you said the bachelor so the bachelor said no i don't completely agree with your statement perhaps you would like to tell them a story was the aunt's retort so so here the aunt thought that why don't you only tell that story now tell us a story demanded the bigger of the small girls so as there was no other option so the bachelor started beginning with the story once upon a time began the bachelor there was a little girl called bartha who was a extraordinarily good so how she was she was extraordinarily good means beyond your expectation she was very good and the children's momentary aroused interest begin at once to flicker all the story seems dreadfully alike no matter who told them so always uh, no. so all of a sudden when they heard this na one thing came in their mind that every story is like this only it is almost the same that you have one character as a girl who is very very good so there was not any interesting thing in that story she did all that she was told and she was always truthful she kept her clothes clean ate milk puddings as though they were the jam tarts and learned her lessons perfectly and was polite in the manners now whatever these are the whatever things by being said by the bachelor these are all the qualities how she behaved was she pretty asked the bigger of the small girls so the bigger girl said was she pretty also no as pretty as of you said the bachelor but she was horribly good now here horribly good a person can be good or can be horrible but what is the meaning of horribly good now here there was a wave of reaction in the favor of the story the word horrible in the connection with the goodness was a novelty that commended itself it seems to introduce a ring of truth that was absent from the aunt's tale of the infant life now here here comes the uh, your uh, key that how he started creating the interest so here he created the interest by using the word horribly good and and here comes the ring of the truth that means what small small realities of the life which we really forget to appreciate or which we forget to notice and this uh, ring of the truth it was not present in the unstale of the infant life so here we we had concluded with the part one of the story that how the stranger he had tried to create enthusiasm tried to create interest for the children in the story and we'll be continuing with the next part i hope you all have understood the story till here very well and if you like my educational video kindly children 
like it and subscribe it thank you children god bless you all